Hello, Film Crusaders, and welcome to our latest episode. My name is Sean Waskrug. With me, as always, is Brian Michaels. And today, much like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, we are doing a non-spoiler review and then a spoiler discussion of Fast X. Uh, Brian literally just got it out of the movie not even an hour ago. I've had about a, two hours now to kind of, you know, break it down in my brain. Um, it's long, but then again, I think... I think all of them have been like two and a half hours for like the last like. Well, honestly, this didn't feel as long to me as the last one though. It it didn't it didn't it, mostly because this one felt like it was just like like pedal to the metal of the entire movie like would would not slow down. I, it didn't it didn't feel its length for me until the start of the third act, and it could have just been because my theater was freezing and I was like so all of a sudden I noticed like I was cold and I'm never cold. So, and I was like, oh my God, how much time's left? I was like, oh man, there's 40 minutes left. <laughs> I was like, so I don't, I don't, I don't blame that on the movie. I blame that on the, on the, the, the theater, which the theater, like I said, I'd rather be cold than hot, but nonetheless, uh, which also shout out to my theater. They, uh, they actually acknowledged, uh, Brian and I today when I walked in, they, they, uh-huh. they actually named the, the, the show without me having to bring it up. And I was like, oh, that's really, really cool. So hello, celebrity theaters. Thank you for watching and being fans of the show. Uh, but we are talking about Fast X. Um, if you guys did not pay attention to last week's Cinemasochism episode, we talked about F9 because it's dog shit. Uh, and we also talked about the state of Fast Saga, like how we felt about the previous films and where we thought the franchise was going to go. Um, there were some predictions that I made in that film that were half right and, and wrong, um, which I'm going to gloat about once we get to the spoiler part of it. Uh, but... Um, I went into this with probably about as as equal to, if not lower, expectations in Fast 9, which Brian and I both had the lowest of low expectations going into Fast X. Um, it just, every, and you and I were in agreement, every trailer just looked, ugh. Yeah, the trailers, I, would, I wouldn't say the trailers hurt my anticipation or expectations, but it didn't help them at all. It just felt like same shit. It just shit reinforced that it's going to be like, oh, more of it this. Just, yeah, it felt like just the same crap over and over and over again. But uh, I'm actually going to let Brian start this one off this way. I fucking always do that. Brian, why don't you start it off? Because I always do it first, so why don't you go ahead? So I, I, I'm honestly still not like, 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 I'm sure at the end of this, you're going to ask me my rating. I don't know it yet. Um, I'm, I'm really kind of all over the place on this thing because there's enough in this movie that's entertaining. Uh, there's enough in this movie that's good enough to make it entertaining, but there's also just as much of it that's so ridiculous and some of it's just plain bad that like keeps it from being what I would call a good movie. So it's kind of like I, I, I'm having trouble figuring out where I'm going to rate this thing. Um, mm-hmm. Generally speaking, I mean, the movies, uh, it's, it starts out pretty much where they left off, you know. Uh, they pretty much replay almost the last, what, Act of Fast Five for yeah, the first time of the movie with new. Oh, oh that's uh, four. four was it? No, five. No, it was five. Fast it was five. Five. Yeah. Five. yeah. Um, but, but my thing is, it's like it's and then after that, after that, after the flashback, essentially. Um, I know I, I get spoilers yet, but you, it starts off with a barbecue and with uh, Tyrese's Roman being annoying and making way too many bad jokes. So that's we, pretty much right I, where I, I, will, left I, will, I will touch on Roman. In this this is not spoiling anything. So, yeah. so for from scene one, he already had me rolling my eyes. I'm just like, please mm-hmm. shut up. And it 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 continued i mean not the entire movie but that's because they had so many characters in so many different places that they didn't have as much screen time to annoy us yeah um honestly i i liked all of the new additions to the cast and i would actually prefer to watch a movie with all of them and get rid of most of the old ones <laughs> i say most of because natalie's got to stay and she can even bring ludicrous with her if she wants mm. um but yeah because I, I alan richson i really uh i liked him i thought he was great in this movie um, Daniela. And he was the one. He was the one that got the least amount of promo in, in really all thought, the trailers. Like, I thought he was really in it. I thought like he was busy filming Reacher, so he'll be in like a scene or two. Yeah, and, I honestly and, did not expect him to have as as big of a role. Yeah, as we're not spoiling anything. They, yet, they, they didn't advertise him for a pretty shit. big role in this. And yeah. so I really liked him in here, and and really kind of felt like for a while like they were gonna, he was going to be the new Hobbs since 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 that's, that, that's really what they were leading through the whole. It, movie. it really felt like that's where they're going with it. Um, but I liked him in it. Uh, Brie Larson has a very small part in it. She was fine, if, if a little anorexic. I she, wish was, she, would like... she was basically <laughs> playing Brie Larson. Yeah. Brie movie. She's basically um, just playing herself. Daniela Melchior from uh, Suicide Squad. Actually, the second movie that, in two weeks that we see with her and Vin Diesel in it, because she was yeah. in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. So there's that. Uh, she was. I, I hope we get to see more of her. I, li- I like what she brings to it. Um, but yeah, as far as, as far as the, the new cast, that's who I liked in it. Um, the story... 
Whoa, whoa, okay. Never mind, never mind. Keep going, keep going. No, no, no. I, I, you I, left, I, I'm left somebody out. You left toilet. somebody out. What's that? You left somebody out in the new cast. Did I leave somebody out? Yes. Who did I leave out? Fucking Momoa. Oh. I got to talk about him more on the spoiler side. Okay, okay, okay. Um, but, but I will say, Jason Momoa, um, for me, was just trying way too hard. They clearly told him to just, like, be, you know, offbeat, be crazy, have fun with it. And he did, but I felt like he went way too far into where it was just, like, almost kind of ridiculous and eye-rolling and kind of annoying. We were, and not to the extent of, like, Tyrese. But he was just, like, almost making him too cartoony. And, like, he was, like... I don't know, mentally ill or something like that. He was like, it's like he was trying to be a version of the Joker, honestly. Oh, a thousand percent. Um, he so was there definitely, was, he was definitely trying to be Joker in this movie. Yeah, there was that to it. Um, as far as as the movie, I, I just one more thing I want to say to going into going into the movie. Um, is that recently they they you know accidentally leaked that this is actually going to be a trilogy now instead of just two movies. Um. Which, if you watch the clip, it's clearly staged. The person was asked to say that, and he had yeah. this prepared response to it. Um, I just want to say that at the moment they said this is a trilogy instead of a two-parter, instead of their intended effect, which was to make us more excited for it, it actually made me less excited for this. Because I'm like, oh, now we got to do three of these things. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that out of the way. Um, honestly, most of the rest of the things I have to say, i got to go spoilers. So let's hear your take on it. Uh, so one thing, and we normally we normally uh talk negatively about this going into other movies mainly the guardians for example is that you don't break up break up the group if you break up the group it loses what makes it special which is what happened in guardians it happens in x-men movies avengers stuff like that well, what i found this happens a lot of times it happens usually in the second or third movie because what happens is these people who maybe were just kind of started out and just they, they get, made them stars now. Yeah. They become big stars. Now it's hard to get them all scheduled at the same time. So they put, well, we'll separate those storylines. Yeah. We don't have to get them all together at once. But well, this group has been together for so long. Exactly. So. And this movie, I would say about 95% of this film, the group is all separated. You got you got Dom, kind of the one that's mostly interacting with all new all the new cast. Mm -hmm. You got Michelle Rodriguez and Charlize Theron doing their own thing. You've got Tyrese, Ludacris. Natalie and uh, Han, uh, Ramsey, not Natalie, Ramsey. You got them doing their own story. And then you got Momoa and Alan Richson and Brie Larson kind of intermixing in with, with everybody. Um, some, oh yeah, and John Cena with, with uh, Little Brian. So you've got like five different plots of stories going on through the film. Some of them work. Others are really what take the movie down a notch. One in very much particular. Um, I think in terms of the cast, outside of the one plot of characters, which I just didn't give a rat's ass about throughout the whole film, uh, I liked a lot of what I saw. This is definitely an improvement over F9. Uh, it's, I will say that. It's definitely better than F9. Way more enjoyable. It's, it's, there's still uh, some eye-rolling moments, and there's still some ridiculously stupid stuff in this film. And can I but, say maybe the worst effects of the series? It, it well, it's because they're just they're, they're trying to go so over the top with it. It just felt like their budget, and it's probably because of the change of the director. Maybe, maybe there's a maybe. change of director. Well, I, with it. I don't know because but, all I know is like, especially like in the scene, like this is in trailers with a big rolling ball going through town. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like on fire, and it's just that, that whole scene. The whole fire which, looked really fake, and which honestly, yeah. I actually enjoyed the scene for what it was. I enjoyed that scene. I thought it was a very fun chase sequence. But it there's a lot that's wrong with that scene, but I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, and the fight scene that we see in the trailer with Michelle Rodriguez and Charlize Theron, I thought was actually fucking awesome. I, well, I, love, I love seeing yeah. Charlize Theron back in action because we're, yeah. I, I don't think we're ever going to get the Atomic Blonde 2 that I want. Um, although Probably. I would love to see another one of those. Um, we are getting another old guard, though. But until then, I, I love seeing her back in action. So. Yeah. Um, I There are some characters that have been completely rewritten compared to where they used to be because... There are some characters, one in particular, it's like, you are a different actor now than you were when this one movie came out, and you have been completely rewritten to be like a character that you were on another show, which I think helped that character. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. What I, I actually have to say it. We will talk about it in the spoiler. It's a, he's, that person's an entirely different character. Like That is not the same character we saw in previous films. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, I, I wasn't annoyed 
watching it. I, I there was a lot of like, okay, this is this is entertaining. I'm having I'm I'm not like having a blast watching it because I that that's come and gone with Fast Furious franchise. But I wasn't like, oh my god, I can't like when we had to rewatch Fast Nine where I was like, how much more time's left? I was like, I'm in this. And you want you want to know the real reason why I was in this? Jason fucking Momoa, man. I loved it. You want to know why I loved his performance? Because unlike Tyrese, who can't decide what he wants to do in this film, Momoa knows the fucking film he's in. He knows the utter ludicrous, ludicrous pun intended, in this film. And well, he's, of course no ludicrous is in this film. He yeah. is all in on like, look, this shit's bad shit crazy. So I'm going to bring the dude broness of Aquaman into this. And I'm just going to have fun chew on every scene possible because i'm sorry you no know, he's he's dude bro joker that's what he is he's dude bro joker and i was there for every scene he was in because i fully and you know this i said this i was fully going in expecting to hate his performance in this film and he is the one thing that kept me going through this entire film whenever i was starting to lose mm. lose favor of the film start to go eh. momoa would come in and just do something oddball and just funny see i and didn't i didn't I hate him. him i loved him in this movie i did i, I didn't him. hate him I, I like there are parts of it i liked but it just like so often he would just like be doing these weird little dances or saying weird things or having this hair on weird buns you gotta, and remember, having... you gotta remember in, in in character he he did get a pretty bad head injury from from what happened so he, he and then he you know he lost his father this is not spoilers you got to watch fast five yeah. He's basically the son of the bad guy in Fast Five. Yeah. So you can add that eccentricness to his character. But, dude, he's having fun. And he made me have fun watching the movie. Because that's the thing is you have, you have Momoa having so much fun. And then you got Vin Diesel trying to get an Oscar performance. And it almost makes – There's one moment in particular where he tries to show emotion on his face. And it's almost laughably bad. It's, and you know it's the laughably moment. bad. Momoa <laughs> makes Vin look bad in this movie. Because, once again – Mom, there, there's a scene in Brazil, and it's in, it's kind of in the trailer. It's when they're having like a face off chat. Momoa's having so much fun, just egging him on and doing this. And Vin, because I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's just trying to keep his muscles pumped, but he's like this the whole time, like he's trying to hold in a shit, like. <clears throat> and Momoa's just like, hey, motherfucker, I'm having a blast here, and it just made Vin look bad. That is not Momoa's fault. That is Vin Diesel's fault for not matching the energy that we were getting. I'm not saying Vin Diesel should have been wacky and fun, but my God, dude, like, come on. Like, you're not going to get an Oscar from this shit. Fucking lighten the fuck up. Now, in the third act, when we knew what the stakes were at that point, that then, yes, bring that. But at that point, like, there was times where Vin was actually trying to, like, play but it just didn't come it, it came off bad it came off like bad acting for me it's like vin to me outside of tyrese was the worst part of this film because every time vin Vin's was on the worst screen part of most fast and the furious he, he is he is because every time vin was on screen is when the utterly ridiculous over the top shit happened not the rest of the cast they would do stuff but most of their stuff i would sit there going would that be potent potentially plausible and i'd be like yeah maybe probably it could and then everything Vin did, I'm like, no, that never, never would happen. That nope, he's got the most indestructible car in the world. His car can take more damage than a fucking tank. And 90% of the time in this movie, he should have died. And yes, that's a that's a that's an ongoing tread through most of the fast films, but in this one, especially because of all the shit that Momoa brings down on him, it makes it just that much more ridiculous. And like you said, the big the big thing about this movie is that we now know it's the first of a trilogy. So 90% of this movie ends in cliffhangers. There are characters that are brought in. About 15 different cliffhangers, by there's, the way. Yes, there's like, there's like 15 different character cliffhangers. And some of them are in the middle of the film. And you're like, oh, well, we're going to see them again. No, there's characters don't. you don't see again, which, yeah, no. we'll get into that later. And it's like, it's like, oh, okay. So why were they in the film? You could have saved them for the sequel. You could have brought them in for the sequel to make it matter more. And the endings, it's like, because, like, my dad, he didn't know there was going to be a trilogy. So he's watching, he's like, oh, I can't believe blah, blah, blah happened. I was like, oh, I'm not. A lot of them I hear are like, 
that that that's the end that there's what? yeah because i was like i was like they're gonna end it like this this is such a shitty stupid ending but i was like i was like we know there's two more movies anyone who thinks these these stakes at the end of this film are like an end game they're not because we know we have at least five fucking more hours of this <laughs> of this series left it's like it's like trying to like put your main characters in peril at the halfway point of a season there's like 12 episodes left you know they're fine like Let's be or like real. a character in, in danger in a prequel when you already know if they're still alive and later. Exactly. Movie. It's 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 eh, that and that frustrated the hell out of me. But at the end of the day, Fast X is an improvement on Fast Nine. It's it's having fun, but not being nearly as ridiculously stupid as Fast Nine or as F Nine was. It still has its its moments, but I feel like it did reel it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um some characters work great the new additions like i said alan richardson is great uh brie larson is basically playing brie larson which i'm fine with because i love brie larson um and i thought momoa was was the best part of the film for me uh the rest of the cast some have great moments some have great scenes others i kind of wish they would have you know just been killed off movies ago um there are surprises uh there's a mid-credit scene not a post-credit scene so after the mid-credit scene you guys can leave you don't have to sit there unless you want to watch the cast which you know more power to you um, but at the end of the day, I would say this one is probably about middle of the road for me in terms of the fast franchise. Really? Okay. Uh, I mean, it's, well, think about this. It's better than F9. It's better than fucking Tokyo Drift. To me, it's better than Too Fast, Too Furious. And it's better than Fate of the Furious. Because I, so I'd, I, I'd support Fate above this myself. I, I, mean, I, 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 I don't. I'm not sure about Too Fast. Because Fate, Fate of the Furious, Vin's acting just tears that movie apart for me. And the whole submarine mission thing I thought was fucking ridiculous. So I, I put it like right there, which is about like five, fifth or sixth. I think it's sixth. So compared to where it was last or two years ago, this is a considerable improvement. I'm not generally like giddy excited to see the next one. Yeah, granted, that was a low bar, but yeah. it was a very low bar. But the parts that were really, really horrible about F9, they improved or got rid of to a point. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're going to sit, we're going to be here in t probably two years. No, and I will say, I wish it, I wish it had just told a coherent single story. They can, they can have, yes. they can have plot threads going through next week. like they always have, yeah. but I wish it had been a self. They were doing their best. Thing. They were doing their best to make this infinity war. Yeah. They were a thousand percent this trying to infinity make war slash own. empire strikes back. And it's not really, and it's yeah. Not, yeah. And infinity war only works with end game. So this movie does feel a little incomplete. Now, once the trilogy is over and we watch all three of them as a whole, which that's a really long trilogy. That's like Lord of the Rings level, almost long. This could be better, but right now, because we know we're two years out and stuff like that, hell, even with Lord of the Rings, we only had to wait a year. But it still feels kind of like half a film because there's so much left off the table by the end of the film. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, what, what, what did you give it score-wise? I... I'm probably going to settle on a three out of five. Three out of five. I, because of Momoa's performance, because he saves the film for me. He, he saves it from being just eh to I enjoyed myself while watching this. So I'm actually going to give it a 67%, which is a three and a half for me, which like I said, about middle of the road for the fast saga for me. But um, we hope you guys enjoyed this non-spoiler uh, review. We are now going into our spoiler discussion. So anyone who has not seen Fast X or doesn't want to be spoiled about this film, leave thank you subscribe like share come back for more especially if you're from the movie theater guys I, you I go to the celebrity theaters come back here and yes uh now if you have seen the movie we're not going to talk about all that crap so here's your spoiler warning boom, 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 boom you're on your own now you can't get pissed anymore uh first off things that i predicted correctly uh i said that they could not finish this with a barbecue they did not <laughs> no, I, said, they get even said. <laughs> I said end i said end and they did not i said gal gadot would come back and you were strongly against that oh fuck i, I, I thought even up. they're not that stupid i'm like seriously a, oh a thousand uh, honestly honestly for the first for, at that brief moment i thought it was mia and i was about to get really really pissed off well because because neither one makes sense because this means that mia, gal gadot is a, mia she's a alive b working with cypher Exactly. There's so much wrong with that. It's literally in there just to shock. Just to bring it back because nobody I can said, die. That's why I, I honestly, I don't, 
I'm sure Jacob will show up alive. I'm sure. Well, yeah, obviously, we're, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that here real quick. Obviously, the other three people will end up alive, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. But um, so yes, I said I said Gal Gadot would come mm-hmm. back. She did. I said Cipher was gonna become one of the good guys. Yes and no. Michelle Rodriguez and her are basically gonna become buds. Then, I don't think they're gonna become buds. I I honestly. But well, do you think Shaw? Do you think the enemy of my enemy is my? Group? What's that? You think the Shaws are best buds with the groups? Because they're not, but they're still there to help them beat the bad guys at the end of the day. And Cypher is now a part of the group. She's now a part of family. So I said that was going to happen, and it fucking did. And I was wrong about Brian. I was wrong about them killing Brian off. I still think they fucking should have, because I would have. I think that should have been the end, was that Momoa ended up killing Brian. Mm-hmm. And that's where it leads into. Because honestly, a lot of these trail ends here, maybe that should have ended the second film. I think when they made this movie, he, that's, this is what because that was me. the intent. The intent was that it was one more movie after. This, this is what worries me even more is when you have one movie going to the final movie, fine, make this Empire Strikes Back type thing, you know, yeah. Infinity War, where you realize cliffhangers. But if after the fact you decide, oh, let's make it into three movies, that means you're going to be artificially stretching out movies that are already stretched out. You're basically thin. you're doing you're doing the Deadly Hallows, Mocking Jay. Uh, whatever the fuck the last Twilight movie was. But you know what? Here's the big difference. Those were books. They had a lot of story to tell. If you are not going to stretch Fast 11 into two films just so you can get more money out of it, you're going to piss off the fans, and you're probably going to have a bad story. The ending of Fast X felt like an ending going into the final chapter, not going into the chapter before. Especially with the return of... Gal Gadot with the return exactly. of Dwayne Johnson. It's like that's the kind of thing you do going into the final movie, not going into the second of three. Exactly, and 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 honestly, I it, back to what you were saying. I I don't think John Cena's dead because no one fucking dies in this franchise. No, I no, mean, he, Han, yes, yes Han, we saw Han yes we saw him in that thing right as it blew up. Yeah, fine. but then again, we saw that with Han as well. We saw Han explode. We saw fucking Gal Gadot fall out of a train going what like eighty miles an hour down a freeway, which she would have just been fucking you know hamburger meat at that point um no one apparently dies in this fucking franchise unless you're a villain that no one gives a shit about There's a plane on a runway right yeah she she was okay. she jumped off the, yeah the, you said a train on a freeway that's what threw me oh, I'm like what I'm sorry run, <laughs> runway just well, making sure it was long enough it probably was the fucking <laughs> right <freeway. laughs> but it's i'm sorry i don't buy that scene is dead i don't i don't because fast the fast and the furious franchise is more like the mcu now where it's like if you think they're dead they're not they're gonna come Nobody's back dead. he might be a little scorched you know just like just like fucking rome and ramsey and han and uh well, them, they're, 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 not, they're, not dead. Dead. they're they're way off screen so obviously it was something they're gonna live they jump that. out of the airplane and but seeing that they car. show basically him crash and explode but they'll still bring him back somehow yeah, exactly they're fucking alive if they killed them, honestly, except for Ramsey, I honestly wouldn't be pissed because that to me was the worst fucking storyline of this film. I gave yes, Nat, Natalie's they kill Ramsey, I'm done. <laughs> Ramsey's fucking great to look at, and I, I I actually like her performance. Yeah. I did not give a rat's fucking ass about their characters. I didn't care about Han. I didn't care about fucking Rome. My God, Rome just needs to die. And I never have problems with Ludacris at all because I like Ludacris, but. The, the whole like Rome's mission and Rome's in charge and blah blah blah. Can I just talk like, about that for a minute? The I very don't first time shit. we see them, and they the first time he says, you know, oh, the agency called, they have a mission for us. I'm like, oh my god, why would any agency call you guys for a fucking mission? I'm just like, you guys are not like super agents, especially like, when you have a guy like Alan Richson. <laughs> <laughs> like, like at your disposal, and then, and then, as far as you know, it's something like some major important, it's you know, heist thing. world thing. And they're like, "Oh, let's get these guys." And you know what? Roman wants to be in charge. Let's give him this one. Um, if it's as important as you think it is, no. And not only, and not only put him in charge, but the main part of the mission is an RC car. Like, come on, guys. And Vin, and that's the other thing too. Is Vin's like totally okay? Like, yeah, yeah, you guys are good. You don't need me for this. Oh, and I was just like, all right, whatever. But it's just, ah, every time they were on screen, I immediately started to check out. The only the only thing I did like of them was actually when they brought Pete Davidson in, because I actually thought that was a funny scene. Uh, he, I didn't know he was going to be in that, did you? I didn't either. When he popped yeah. up, I was like, I don't know whether I'm going to like this or not, but I actually enjoyed that whole he was, scene. He was playing Davidson. the right character for Pete yes. Davidson to play, he was and he was in it for a short enough time, a perfect amount of time. And I, I actually kind of had a little funny moment when Han got high, but they didn't overuse it. 
like they was like I was like all right how far are they gonna go with this and they go oh, they Han played it cool they didn't blow it out of proportion or anything like that and here's here's the part that here's the part that annoys me about these films uh there's one big part which we'll get to but so Tej and Rome start a fight we've seen these guys quote unquote fuck up people who are specially trained but yet when they're fighting each other it's a fucking girl fight which is probably how they really should fight in real life so how are we supposed to buy, i mean you can you i mean can i guess you could say they're pulling back at each other because yeah, they're really yeah enemies, you can chalk it up that they're still, fighting like like said, they fought off like mercenaries and trained military people and things like yeah this. but it's like come, martial come arts on. experts and, and and speaking of that can we please stop with mia being this epic badass that can fucking take out like 10 agent guys because that whole sequence i was like mia no you would be done after First of all, she you, weighs like 85 pounds you weight. maybe could get past one of those guys like with the element of surprise because you threw the frying pan and, and like you could maybe take one maybe two a whole swarm cut Mia, you are not i'm i love jordan Peterson. Mia, you are not special you are not trained Maybe Brian taught you some shit, but teaching you and being certified trained from an agency, you, the, no, first off, I, I, any of those guys, they probably weren't going in with fucking live rounds. They could have shot her, tased her, something, and she's fucking taking out like eight of these guys. And I almost got, I got worried there for a second when, when she looked in the hallway and she saw one dude go flying. I was like, if that was little Brian, I'm fucking walking out of this theater. <laughs> because I, I thought it was going to be like a Superman return. Oh, no. Like when, when the kid chucked the piano. And I was like, because honestly, people have superpowers in this movie now. So. Because I was like, I saw that. I was like, who the fuck did that? And then they showed little Brian. I was like, I swear to God, if that was that kid, I'm, 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 I'm done. And sure enough, John Cena shows up. I'm sorry. I, I did like yeah, John Cena showed up. Shows shows up. I, I do want to say up. that, that first of all, they did in this movie what I hate in every single movie is that the bad guys all were always wearing like full SWAT gear and masks and stuff. So they can be yeah. faceless enemies so that you can kill them all. And it won't, you know, you, you can get your PG 13 rating. But guess. this was almost like John Wick to a point. Cause there's times where they're shooting them like here, here and here, and they're still getting back up. Yeah. They were doing, doing that. And then it's like, it, <sighs> but at the end of the day, they're not bad guys. They're That's students. the other thing. Especially John Cena starts killing them all. Yeah. And, 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 now, even and now we find out, we find out, I'll get into this later. We find out that Richard, who's heading the guys, agency, yeah. is a bad guy. But, but as yeah, far as we know, everyone else is just employees of the agency. They don't yeah, know any Statham, better. Statham, Statham and, was and, murdering people. And, like, and Statham and Statham just killing everybody. I'm like, yeah, they're just doing their jobs, doing? dude. Like, what are you doing? Uh, I do, I do love, I do love that the biggest move, and that was him hitting his WWE finisher, the AA, and that was so, that's the one that threw the guy through the roof, like through the floors. Oh, that was his wrestling finisher, and WWE was, flip, you know, basically a standing fireman's carry. But yeah, John Cena was not Jacob. John Cena was Peacemaker in this film because I think everyone realized John Cena's funny and he's a better actor when he's being funny. Because I'm sorry, Jacob and F9 and Jacob and Fast X are two entirely different fucking people. I mean, yes, not yes he's not their enemy now, so he's in a better mood. And yes, he's also with a kid, so he's going to behave differently. But it very is very he's, much a different personality. There. He was a thousand percent peacemaker, but toned down because it was it's not R rated. He was peacemaker to a the peacemaker is not as dumb. Yeah, uh, I would say Jacob's smarter than peacemaker. That's what I'm saying. I, I, I think you said peacemaker is not as dumb. No, I said he was like the peacemaker, but not as dumb. As oh, peacemaker. okay. I was, like, I, was like, I was like, peacemaker's dumber than Jacob. No, no, no I, I meant he was not playing as dumb as he does when he's playing peacemaker. For this. But yeah, um, the kid who played little Brian, he was fine. I had nothing really against, but he, he's, he's playing little kid. It's fine. I was waiting I, for him to like get into a car and do some major driving thing. Because that early scene when he was training. Except for the fucking jumping scene. I'm sorry. There's no the jump. There's, first, like, of I, all, I, first of all, nothing that Vin said to him, nothing that Dominic said to him. About Made you know, remember what we learned about you know, feel the line, make you know, it's like that would not help him make a jump from car to car. I'm sorry, the cars are going to this is a child, he's not gonna have the leg strength to jump that far. Yeah, he gets shot out of that car. The cars are not are going way too fast. No chance in hell this kid makes that jump. He can't adjust I, for centrifugal force where it's gonna throw him in a different direction. This was me a thousand percent in the theater during this scene. I like he says the line, I was like, what the fuck does that mean for the kid here? And then I see what's got about to happen, and I went. 
don't you don't you do it? Why are you gonna do something? The kid would have to like jump in and like drive or something like that. Yeah, but, but no, like I'm, I'm literally watching it. I'm shaking my head like, don't don't you fucking do it. And then the kid leaves and they do that like, and I just went, fuck me. The, there were so many times when we had the same reaction. I was just like, oh. I was like, you. This kid was playing it straight the whole fucking film until the the. And I was like, God damn it, film. Like, really? You had to go and fucking do that. Come on, man. Like, but yeah, I hey, one, thing, one more thing about Jacob yeah. is that when, when they were driving, I did like that they were listening to Mark, to Mark, Mark Wahlberg because he always looks like basically a big like uh inflated Mark Mark Wahlberg. And so I thought that was honestly, a honestly, what you need to do if you haven't noticed before, look up Ernest and John Cena together. He looks like a roided out Ernest P world. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even being mean. It's a thousand. Pre- He's look it up. He John Cena and Ernest look exactly the same. He looks like Jay, is Jim Barney. Jim Barney, not Jim James Barney. Barney. Jim Barney. They, they do, and it's not. It's uncanny. It's uncanny how close they look together. But I. But but you know what though? I enjoyed those scenes. I had fun watching John Cena and. and they were, and they were fine. I had I had two problems. Well. Um, well, one wasn't his problem. One was like I've, I've alluded to earlier, uh, when he dies, uh, yeah. and Vin Diesel is trying to show emotion that was laughably bad. That was just, just trying to look sad, just like look like he was taking a shit or something. Yeah, it's, Vin was. Diesel. I'm sorry, Vin Diesel. Like he he did used to be a good actor, didn't he? I I Where, are we are we are we imagining this? I mean, he's never really had a chance. I mean, like on Saving Private Ryan, things like that. Yeah, it's like he used to have range. He doesn't have it here, and. Yeah. But like now I feel about the family, which was my one of my favorite moments is Jason Momoa going family. <laughs> yeah, dude, Momoa, like I said, Momoa had me the whole fucking time. I loved his character. And I, I have with him, I was like, he's basically being like the Joker. And I'm totally okay with that. And I every every one of his lines, dude, I was laughing. I was having a good time watching Momoa. And I love, I love because remember I told you when we were talking about this during the summer movie preview, I was like, I was like, every time uh the trailer comes on and I'm, I'm you know with my mom she's like he looks fat you know it's not like they they, they slim his he ass down fat, but he didn't look like his usual like no, he know, just he just looked puffy but i mean he's he wasn't bloated I mean, he honestly he just looked bloated he did but he wasn't like out of shape or anything they just kind of he, he just looked puffy but did you notice that they slimmed his ass down for the fast five part did oh that, you that and then and then he um, was so lean down that and it was uh, noticeable his, then his dad had some had some serious like smooth like well, de-age skin going it's on been, too. it's been 12 years i'm sure he doesn't look the same but i immediately like chuckled as soon as he popped on screen in the beginning i was like i was like i was like oh come on now you guys are gonna make it even look even more that he looks bigger in, in present day but i i, I thought Momo was fucking hilarious and then there's that like in in, in, in like say, in true joker form you have that scene where he's talking to the two, two dead guys. And he's just having that full on conversation. He's got like the guy doing like the, the smile. Like mm-hmm. that is a Joker scene. Yeah. That's totally a Joker scene. Yeah. Mo- Momo's just like, say so he's just having fun. I was like, he knows the movie he's in where Rome can't decide whether he's just full on comedy or if he wants to be serious. Ludacris stays in his lane. Ludacris knows exactly the lane. He's at Ramsey knows the lane. Everyone else, even Vin, he knows his lane. It's not a good lane, but he knows his lane. Um, I, Charlize Theron, I thought was having fun too. I loved her dialogue. I was glad to have her back, and I kind of think that the way they decided to go with it worked. Now, if at the end of the day she's all buddy buddy with them again, that's going to be totally unbelievable. But as far as I think it's going to be one of those things where eventually, when when it gets to the time where she finds an opening, then we we have to turn her back to being bad. Yeah, we have to. Um, but I but I I liked I liked that moment where like. They're, they fight and like Michelle Rodriguez goes up the tube, realizes she's in our car. She comes back down and she's like, "Yeah, it's cold out there." And she's like, "Yeah, thank you, Cipher. Thanks yeah, a lot." Char- I, lo- I love Charlize in action movies. Yeah. And, she's and her cool. hair looked actually great in this. I was like, I was like, this is back to Charlize looking fucking good. Um, I will say, uh, the it's been two years, but the the snooty like rich kid, he does not look well. Cause that kid with that the kid in the bot in the body bag or in the in the punching bag. Oh, that was, guy, yeah. He was not fat in Fast Nine. He did not look like that in Fast Nine with a flabby stomach and shit. 
Was that was that supposed to be the Snooty Rich Kid in the in the? That list? was the pro, that was the post credit scene in Fast Nine. Remember? I didn't think it was that character. I thought it was just one of the. No, because remember in Fast Nine and Fast Nine post credit scene, Statham's beating him up. He gets a knock on the door, and it's Han. Right, but I didn't realize the guy in the bag in that post credit scene was supposed. Yeah, to that be was David. That was him. Hmm, maybe I was under the impression that that was him. It looked like him. I thought that's why the correlation was over that. It was just some random dude he's beating up. I thought it was. I thought it was him. I thought maybe Helen Mirren captured him. And and put him in. I, I mean, we'd have to go back, I guess, and check. But I thought that I thought that was him that entire time. But when he got out of there, I was like, "Ooh, you you didn't look like that in the in that movie." I don't know. I have to rewatch it. Maybe he died. I don't know. But I thought I thought at the end of the movie that that was him. I thought that was like the reveal. Was that you found out that he was the one getting punched? Well, I thought it was just I thought it was just that Jason Statham was there questioning one of the people to find out. You know. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll have to go back. I I always thought that it was the number two guy. But yeah. um, hey, while we're on Jason Statham. Um, he is one of the many threads where he's like, okay, I'm going off on my own. He goes off and we never see him again. The only reason he's in this movie is because of the post credit scene. Because they were going to go, because if you didn't have him in the film, what was the fucking point of the post credit scene? Unless you were going way into the future. That is the only reason he was that in That and because people are like, oh, we want to see what happens when he sees Han again. Which it wasn't, it wasn't as, as great as everyone made it out to be. Like, it was well, just like, it's like, the only reason you're, you could be here is to try and take revenge on me. And so he starts to fight with him when it's, Han could have just been like, no, I'm cool, dude. Yeah, Han goes and put out a bag of chips. And, and the whole just, thing like, about, you know, how, you know, he knows he was framed for all this stuff or whatever. Yeah, Han's, Han's Zen is shit. But so, <laughs> yeah, so Statham just disappears well, like, at that point. Because that was the other weird part too in the first scene uh, where, where, you know, Tyrese is, or Rome is playing with the RC car and Han goes and goes, I definitely don't want to hear anything from you. I'm like, did we miss something? Like, did we, did something happen between these two? And then after that, they're like, I, I trust anything you do, man. I'm with you hundred percent. I'm like, what was th this thing at the beginning? Like, I feel like we missed something here. Cause like, that was like incredibly like douchebag to Han, you know? Mm -hmm. And then of course we got the same old Brian treatment, which I'm sorry. We, we talked about this in cinemasochism. Brian would not just be off doing nothing, especially with this. Brian well, is, and, and, and again, they, they said, oh, Brian, we got Brian and Mia off someplace fit, safe. Which, but then Mia's... Which another weird. another thread they leave because we see Momoa outside Mia, wherever Mia is. And then they would... That wasn't, that wasn't Mia. That wasn't Mia. That was, um, uh, fuck, Daniela Ratcatcher, too. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, because he captures her, and that's, and then he has her in the trunk. Oh, okay. at first, At first, I thought it was Mia also. But then I was like, wow, he sure got to the U.S. fucking fast. But then okay. once you saw him walking towards him, I'm like, oh, no, that's Elena's sister. But here's my thing is, is yeah. you, you have you have Mia, and you say, Brian and Mia, we got them someplace safe. Like, fine, whatever. They can't. But then it's like, how do you explain why he's not at this big family barbecue this and time? Why, yeah, like his seat's there. And then why is Mia watching little Brian – and Brian's not. Where's Mia's kid? Why have we never seen Mia's kid? Have you noticed that Mia's kid's never has not been visible since. Because Brian's in Jerem somewhere. Apparently, they're not allowed at the barbecue. Like, so. Apparently not. But it's just it's one of those things where it's like you almost should have had Momoa kill him off, so you didn't have to keep fucking throwing these stupid lines in the film. Oh no, yeah, Brian's up. You know. Well, see, that's my that's my thing is the, the, of of your predictions. The one I felt most strongly of was they're not going to kill Brian off because I think that too many people would. At this point, consider that disrespectful. It's not disrespectful, especially with the especially with the motives that Momoa had in this film. Like, I'm going to take everything from you. That would have been like. But a lot of people would world. because because of the real life situation. I think a lot of people would be like, eh, "That's bad." I, it, grow up, people. The character needs I'm, to. Be I'm taken. just saying. I'm explaining why they would. I know. Be. I get Some it. I get it. Like, but I'm saying is the the character needs to be taken off the board, so we don't have to constantly keep coming up with oh he's. He's off, you know, in the farm watching the kid. No, just <laughs> kill Brian off. So, and, and plus, if anything, it'll give Mia motivation to actually be a badass instead of just randomly fucking up Asian dudes for no fucking reason. Um, in terms of the action, I like I said I thought the rolling ball scene. I thought it was fun. I was watching. I was like, I was like, it was Rocket League the movie. Is what it, it was. was. And, I, and I didn't hate that. <laughs> I, I kind of, my thing is like the only thing first, I kept thinking was that there's so much time, so many times where that ball would have stopped. <laughs> that's just it. Apparently, they started at the highest point in city. Apparently, Rome is one giant hill because that thing rolled downhill for yeah. like 
10 minutes straight. It was basically it was basically the end of Bad Boys 2 where it just kept going down that hill through houses and shit. And down it, hill, down hill. That, that's just it. It could, it could blow through entire buildings, but then like he could stop always, with his car. It would always miss people. It was it was it was it was the luckiest ball ever because anytime it was getting right into a person, it would avert. It bounced over somebody or avert or like hit the bus, but like, behind where people are. It'd be one thing if like Momoa was there like controlling it, which honestly that fire would have made a. Well, that's just it. They didn't have like, kind of motorized. There was it wasn't it was just pure gravity supposedly that's making this thing roll, and this thing would have stopped a thousand times. But this and, thing, but, but my thing is the way the, the way like Dom was able to like like divert it and stop it and stuff with his car when it's crashing through entire buildings. Well, that's the other thing too. Is that, like the police? Do they not see that they're the police, trying no? We're just to after him. Her? We don't. We don't care about this destruction yeah, happening. Like, and the same thing. The same thing when they catch up to Letty and the police catch, or the, I guess the agency. Uh, they didn't even continue to chase after Letty. Momoa. Like they didn't. Even, they didn't even. They didn't blink or look at Momoa who kept driving off. It was like, yeah, oh, and he's taunting them as he's leaving, and she's standing there, and she looks just as shocked as everyone else when the bomb goes up. But let's grab her. And it's like. It's at one point where it's like you were watching Vin and he is trying to chase down this bomb. I'm sorry, if it if he is the one who's releasing this bomb, do you think he'd be following it? No, do you think he'd be crashing into it trying to slow it down? It's like, but no, let's box him in and keep him from and this is, like that's just shit that just irritates the fuck out of me. Because eventually someone's gotta pay attention and like they're just shooting at him and they're shooting. It's like, first off, that's a bomb and you're shooting at a bomb. You're an idiot. But that's it, the thing is, I don't know what's what's. I mean, obviously, it has a detonator to, to detonate, but apparently, it's very well protected because that thing it, bounced it's the around bomb from Dark Knight Rises, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, nothing it's, was gonna it's make incredible. that thing blow up. Yeah, and, oh, and then and then that oh, that final move with the fucking crane that jumps and hits and the crane. Yeah, that was it. the whole. I was because I was watching this whole thing, I was like, that was the first time in the movie. I'm like, oh god, we yeah, I was, like, I was like, I was like, Vin's car is pretty indestructible because that ball would have destroyed him. I go, but. He probably has his car reinforced really well, so it could probably take the damage. So I was watching this whole thing. I was like, I I can let this stuff go. And then he does like the RRR crane thing. And I was like, nope, that's it. <laughs> and he lands like perfectly down the stairs. And then he nauses when the bomb explodes. And he's the only car that doesn't get fucked up. And the windshield didn't shatter. It's like that windshield. Oh, did you notice that they fixed your your they fixed your trailer flow? I did notice that. I just did not use it, it. it when, when it, the car it lands. It doesn't like break. Yeah, it, it, it I noticed that because like, I was like, "Oh, here comes the moment that Brian always talked about." And I was like, "Oh, they fixed it." I was like, "Oh, that's gonna piss Brian off." <laughs> no, I'm happy they did it. I, I don't want them to be bad. Oh yeah, but I was just like, I was like, "Oh, it's almost like they heard us," and they're like, "We gotta fix this. This car clearly broke on the drop." <laughs> but like, I was, um, but yeah, like I, I thought the race sequence was fine, except for like. What like the the race sequence oh, in, race. in Brazil? I thought you said rape sequence. Like what? I didn't see that part. Did not see that in the movie. Maybe that's no, what Momoa no, did no. when he went into the into the hope into the, the room. Where... The race sequence is completely stupid. It's it like is absolutely no reason that he would race him. Well, and it's just, it's just more or less because because he he wants to get in, in Dom's head and then he's he he. But beat why him. would why would Dom race him? Because clearly that wasn't gonna. He wasn't going to let him take him in if he lost the race. Because Dom is an ego dude. Because they needed a race sequence and people shaking their asses in the movie to be a Fast and Furious movie. And, That's he's, the only ego, reason and he's an ego douche and he can't say no to it. But it's like, don't try and make us care about the guy in the green. Like, don't. I don't think we did. I think we cared more. No, about but you, made, you kept having Vin look back like, oh, oh my God, he died. Which, by the way, Daniela like, cleaned up as hot as hell. <laughs> That's because she actually looks like a normal person and not like not a hobo or an alien and the other thing we've seen her in. But it was just like that whole sequence. I was like, stop, stop trying to make us try to care about this this guy who's had like two minutes of screen time. It's like, it's like no, it's just shut up. It's like this is stupid. But yeah. I, the damn scene is is the scene that that broke it for me because it's like as soon as I saw the two semis and you did the sketch, I was like. I was like, oh, he's gonna fucking drive down the dam, isn't he? Well, there was a shot in the trailer. I didn't, I didn't watch it. There was a shot in one of the trailers that, sh which I, I avoided most of them, but I think I saw this. But they, never, they had, they had been driving down the dam, and I was like, oh my god. I never knew about the dam, and I never knew about the rolling ball because I stayed away from the trailers after the the first actual story trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't know about any of that stuff. Um, all I knew was that Charlize and Michelle Rodriguez were gonna fight. That, that was it. 
Um, so I, 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 for the most part, stayed, stayed away from most of that stuff. Um, but yeah, when I saw that, I was like, I was like, I like part of me is like, I'm just gonna have to accept that this is gonna happen. And but here's 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 what I'm wondering, because we know Vin and little Brian are not gonna die. So how are they gonna get the fuck out of this when he's gonna blow up the dam? Where is 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 uh, is John Cena gonna show up? And his fucking in his fucking. Well, it could face. be it could be Mr. Nobody who never got saved. Yeah, but somehow it how, yes, Mr. But Nobody still. <laughs> he never got saved, but now he's just in the wind. Now he's yeah, just that's like, what they're saying. Like, oh, thing. like I'm gonna need a medium or a magician to find Mr. Nobody. Like y'all just gave up, man. Like y'all just don't care about Kurt Russell. Like, but apparently, got, apparently, it sounds like he's fine on his own because he. Does, they didn't refer to him as capture. They referred to him as in the wind. Like he's like yeah, out, like, like he's, he's off underground. The grid. Yeah, I was like I, the whole time watching this, I was like, "Motherfuckers, still are not going to clean up this loop, this this trail." And it's like either Kurt Russell just doesn't want to come back, or he's going to come back at the like very last possible second in like the finale or something to save the fucking day. Also, and little nobody never showed up again after this, his one you what? after the ball sequence. Little nobody, little nobody. You talking about oh yeah, yeah, that was the other thing too. Yeah, he disappeared because he do- he dove out of the vehicle. Cause that's the thing. Was like, oh, cause like when they put the bomb, I was like, oh, was like, okay, I guess they could kill him for some stakes, cause he he's been in at least two movies, and and then nope, he got out of it, and then well, yeah, we never saw him again. He never tried to defend the group at all when everything went to shit. Like, um, but yeah, I was like, I was like, there's so many like plot threads that are just oh. left out there. Go I ahead. You my got favorite part, my favorite part of the damn sequence is the I don't know what you call it, the fucking muscle cam. Where like the camera was like down his arm to the ship. Oh, when it did the freeze thing and like it showed like Brian's face and like, show their faces and then like goes down his arm in this weird way. Yes. It's like, like I said, most of the movie, if you watch, whenever they got a whenever they got like a like a butt like a like a waist and upshot, Vin has got his hands clutched because he's trying to keep he wants his to flexed. Yeah. Yes, and it's like, dude, just do some push-ups in between scenes, man. You don't have to like cl- unclench, dude. You look uncomfortable. 95 percent of this film unclench okay speaking, um, of, speaking of trying to look buff i need to talk about my my main subject of this movie and that's fucking alan richson i was about to, I, was about, I was about to segue into that as well because i and because I, I i love this guy i've loved him since blue mountain state uh i i i was late to the reacher party but i mean i was gonna watch it eventually because I, I i just i love this guy and i was so i thought he was gonna get the scott eastwood treatment where he was like, oh, he's a generic dude who's going to have a couple lines. Well, from scene not- one, I love this dude. He was great. Yeah, and he was in, and he just, I like, I even loved his get up. You know he had that, like, that strap thing there. And I was like, that's like, I, that's a weird. Like, I, I do want to say like first, this. the first scene, I think it's the first scene, at least the first scene with both of them, with Brie Larson and and him, where they're clearly in just like a green screen room. I thought that was little. And they're basically, re- they're basically replaying all the events. It was basically the- exposition. They're basically that's the one thing too is like for the most part you could not have to watch any of the nine fucking films because this movie does everything it can to catch everyone up to the people who haven't watched you you don't they have to watch five, five, five just you. for this yeah so yeah. they bring him in for that but uh, but from from his first scene on i'm like i love him i love what he, he's largely reacher except a little more vocal <laughs> yeah um, but he's I, like I, he's I, like if thad castle got reacher's physique but grew the fuck up real fast. Yeah, and, and they were well, they were totally from the beginning. I'm like, they're okay, Dwayne Johnson's not here. They're making him Hobbs. They're making him the new Hobbs. Oh, and totally. I'm totally on board with that. I would because love I to was, have Because I, I after, after he got shot, he was like, let's go get your shot. I was like, I was like, wow, that was a quick transition. He's immediately part of the family that fast. Fuck. But then, but when he turned, I was shocked. I honestly I was shocked I was, because I, was I wasn't prepared. They, they, they pulled a Henry Cavill because I thought the best thing about Mission Impossible Fallout was Henry Cavill. And I would have said, I would love to see him in five more Mission Impossible movies. I knew, but I no, knew Cavill was the bad guy. But no, they turn him bad. And in this one, they take Richson, who is the best thing about this movie, uh, except for Natalie Emanuel, and they turn him bad. And I'm like, you, know, you want to know why? You want to know why? Because The Rock has to have someone good to fight. Because Momoa and Vin are going to fight each other. And then you're gonna have Richson. I will enjoy Rock watching Rock. that fight, honestly. I will watch the Rock and Richson fight. That is a good fight. Although it's gonna look a lot like that fight on the plane where the Rock fought that other big blonde dude. Except Richson knows how to fuck what Richson's gonna. That's gonna be that's, that's gonna be Godzilla versus King Kong. Right I, I will there. love that fight. That I'm fucking fight. there for it. But at the same time, though, I'm so mad because I, I, I don't want Richson to be a bad guy. I love this character. 
Did you also notice that they that they uh, they you saw Eva Mendez? It was only in a picture, but they, they did show Eva Mendez in the film. Oh, in pictures, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like well, they said like they're they're going after everybody that helped you, and like Eva Mendez was right there. I was like, are we gonna get Eva Mendez back in this? It's possible. She showed up in a post credit of one of the in, other in, in, in uh, Fast Five. Was she was five? in the post credit because that's how you found out that Letty was still alive. No, I wouldn't doubt it. Well, here's the thing: is is because I think the only person we're not gonna get back is Gina Carano. <laughs> she's not coming. Well, she's she's turned bad. Well, she turned bad. bad. Never mind. She yeah. turned bad. Never mind. Uh, I, my question is: Will Luke Evans show up again? I because, hope he does. Why? Because where, whereas know? Statham was, you know, apparently, you know, framed for killing his his fellow soldiers, whatever, and so he's not really a bad guy, um, supposedly in this in their new retcon version of him. But you gotta remember, but, but, Helen but Luke Evans, out. while he did help out because his mom told him to, yeah. he was never still really a good guy. But Helen Mirren is going to be under attack. Why wouldn't Luke show up and team up with Statham? Oh, he, yeah, for so he'll least, totally show up at least, least that scene. He won't show up to be like part of the group, but he will show up to help his mom. Yeah, yeah, which that's fine. He doesn't need to be a part of the whole thing. Like, just show up and be, you know, team up with your brother. I'm fucking there for that scene. I'll watch a 10 minute, se- 10, 15 minute sequence of those two doing that. Because, uh, because like I said, I think that separating everybody and kind of having them all together, I think that actually helped by keeping them all separated. Because you really did start to kind of see who the weaklings are. Because I'm sorry, I didn't give a sh- even though I like I said Natalie is great. I like did not give a flying fuck about those characters. I cared I cared about John Cena and Little Brian just because John Cena was basically peacemaker, and I was like, oh, all right, John Cena's having fun. And the Vince sto- storyline is the main storyline, so you had to be invested in that because of M- M- Momoa. And then I was invested in Michelle Rodriguez. I honestly wish Michelle Rodriguez and Charlie's had more screen time. Because I was like, there was there was one point during the third act, I was like, are they? Because I was like, I, I was like, I was like, I know they're not gonna go back to Statham. I, I I know Statham is not coming back. I was like, he was strictly in there for that. I've I've accepted that. But I was like, are they seriously not gonna go back to Michelle Rodriguez and Charlize? Like, and then they went back at like the worst fucking moment. <laughs> you know what makes me wonder about the whole thing about how you said Charlize and the moment is that I I don't know where it's at now. But around the time they did Hobbs and Shaw, there was also all these talk about they're going to do like a, a female spinoff. Yeah. Like all the girls from Fast and Furious. So I wonder if that that's still happening or not. I don't know. I mean, it could now. You got Brie. You got you got all of them in, in that now to do that. But um, but yeah, I mean, it was just like I said, I didn't hate it. I for thoroughly, for the most part, had <laughs> Without a poster. didn't hate it. Didn't hate it. Was <laughs> not fast. Was not F9. I, I, I agree. It's like I didn't hate the movie. There were parts of it that I was really enjoying, but there was parts of it that I was just like, oh my fucking god! And it's just like it would, every time, every time it started to go up, oh down, uh, down. So for me, it ended up like right in the middle, at three star rating. Like every, every time it started to go down a little bit, it was because it was Rome and Ludacris and them, and then Momoa would come in and peek it right back up. And then when Momoa was off screen, if it was Cena, I'd be like, oh, Cena fucking made a bat cave. Why are we not talking about I this? Totally, I was totally waiting for the kid to be like, it's a bat cave. Yes, and when when he pulled the fuck, I was like, is it going to be a fucking tumbler? Which it almost kind of was. It's like, fucking Peacemaker has the bat cave. Why is no one talking about this? I want him to see him go, you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Yeah, exactly. It's like, are we are we not going to acknowledge that Peacemaker has a bat cave in this fucking world? <laughs> but um, I, guess, I guess the only thing you can kind of chalk up to is like annoying was that like, Momoa had like the overall like intelligence plot armor where he oh he knew exactly where everyone was he knew exactly every back channel he knew how everyone would, would re- react where they would go uh, he, he you know, knew Cena had this yeah. underground lair he knew Cena was gonna go out this back tunnel he knew every single thing why because the plot needs him to and it's like yes it's been ten years but he doesn't he shouldn't know Jacob that well. Um, so, I mean, that was kind of like one of those things where it's like, if he's going to be like this in the next two films, that's not going to work. Well, that's the whole thing. Like when, when Rich and when Richson actually has his turn and he is the one who shot down, well, well, he didn't shoot down, he shot down the plane. It's like, well, why then, what was the point then of Richson helping so many other times when he could have like, and so the only thing is like, thing is because he wanted him at this here, at this moment, so he could also kill the other people. But like, how did he know that they were going to get on a plane and come there? Right. Yeah. No, Rich, Rich had no idea about Rome and them getting on the plane there. Cause I'm saying uh, saying even Momoa, how would he know that they're going to get in a plane and show up there at that moment so that Rich can shoot them down? I don't know. Cause that's the thing is like, he seems to know exactly where they're going to be at all times. I mean, he does have, he does have, he did have God's eye at that point. 
So maybe he, maybe that's why he knew they were coming. But that's the thing is like even Richardson, like he didn't help him that much. All he did was transport him from the the Rio de Janeiro thing to. He defended him and shot a whole bunch of people fucking dead on that freeway. Yeah, but those are just goons. Even Mo is like, stop shooting my new friends. Like they're not, they weren't important to them for that moment. But but like, in theory, like, he's on the same side as them. So he's not going to shoot Momoa. That's all that matters. As long as Momoa didn't get shot. But I mean, at the end of the day, he didn't really help him that much. All he did was navigate him exactly to where Momoa wants. But it's like even Momoa got knocked down, like down a cliff. Not that I knew he wasn't going to die, but then he he got knocked down a cliff, but then somehow got it all the way back up to the fucking top of the dam. At the exact same time, Vin Diesel got to where he was. I was like, how the fuck did that work? And he's like, oh, you went right where I wanted you. I'm like, did he really, though? Did he really, though? Like, would you, were you planning on him taking Brian back and, 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 and knocking you off the road and you getting up there? Because I don't understand how that was part of the plan. So the movie can happen. Exactly. So the movie can happen. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, I think it's, I think it's, an improvement, like I said, it's a three and a half star for me. It could go lower or maybe even gain a half star down the road. Rewind, like I said, I think, I think if the trilogy, the remaining two, cohesively connect well with this to make this one feel more impactful, and they keep Cena dead. Just not that I want Cena to die, but it's like fucking have some fucking like be firm about a death here don't just especially a case like this where he did it as a sacrifice so it's like let his sacrifice be a sacrifice he had a he had a hero moment and i love that even momoa was like, like acknowledged it. it was like that was honorable <laughs> you know even to brian um but uh but it's just like like be firm he is dead and he's not coming back Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because the Rock is back, so like they don't need Cena anymore. Like that was the kind of the whole thing. They brought Cena in because the Rock wasn't gonna come back, and now the Rock's back, so Cena's dead. That's that's a very WWE thing. But I think if this connects with the trilogy, well, this could go up a half star. If it doesn't, it'll drop a half star. Um, so I'll be, and then I'll be right where you're at as well. But yeah, I mean, I, it's not perfect, but. It's an improvement, and I hope that they continue to improve. But I hope that they also realize you have to end this. You can't keep going with this franchise. If you don't end this after 12, um, oh, god damn, they better not go, oh, well, it's going, doing so well. We're going to keep I, I going. I just want a Hobbs and Shaw, too. I don't care what the rest of this shit. Like, know. just have Vin and, I guess, Letty, in a sense, go off into the sunset. and yeah, let that, Give them the and Brian, and my, Brian and Mia treatment. Yeah, and just have Hobbs and Shaw, and you can have Tej and Ramsey join them, you know, because now you got, I mean, you had, I guess for it was one scene, you had Statham with, with them. Because I was wondering, I was like, why aren't they acknowledging Shaw? I was like, oh, wait, I don't think Shaw's ever been with them, ever. Sh- Shaw's always been the bad guy to them, and then Shaw was on the plane. Yeah, Shaw helped out with the plane thing, so, and then he helped out He helped out Hobbs, but he's never been in. Yeah, he's never actually group. been with the group, so that's he why I actually like, wait, wait, he came and dropped him. off the baby at the, bar- at the uh, barbecue yeah. at the end of... But, then he, but he left whatever. her, like, right yeah. after that. So I guess there is no correlation to him with Roman and them. So Because I was wondering, I was like, why aren't they, like, going and, like, stop? It's like, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess Shaw doesn't have that connection with them. Yeah. But... We hope you guys enjoyed, unless you got anything else you want to add. No. No. We hope you guys enjoyed this uh, spoil, non-spoiler and spoiler discussion for Fast Sex. If you guys did, hit that like, share, and subscribe to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos pop up on Movie Crusaders. Of course, don't get to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Let us know what you thought of Fast Sex. Did you like it, dislike it? This is getting rotten scores right now. Uh, I think people are need to kind of lighten up. I I, I, feel, they, I, think, I feel like that I don't know. I, I I think I think people are honestly, I, for, for me. It's about right where it belongs. It's it's like that. It's like it's a barely rotten. It's like fifty seven percent or something. So it's like it's kind yeah, of right where I, I would like to put even it. I gave it a sixty seven, which is just like right above rotten. Yeah. But um, coming up next, we still have this week's episode of the Weekly Crusaders. Uh, based on schedules, that might not come out this week. It'll probably be coming out next week. Um, we'll we'll, we'll see what we can do to line up our schedules. Uh, we also got uh, a cinemasochism coming up here. Um, I don't know if it's going to be this week or next week. I, Brian told me the movie. I have no idea what this movie is. I have no idea what we're in for. Um, it, it's it's, it's going to be I fun. think another fun one. It won't be another boring one. This is going to be a fun one, um, but I've never heard of this film. So that's going to be intriguing. 
uh, next week. Um, what do we got movie right wise? Uh, movie wise, next week is a light week in the wake of Fast Furious. Oh, a Little Mermaid, but I'm not going to see that. Um, I will see it because I I have to and and yeah. Uh, the Machine uh, with Burt Kreischer um, and that. and Kandahar, which is the latest Gerard Butler. Uh, you'll, you'll see that. Like, you will see that. <laughs> I guess, honestly, I like most of his like movies like this. He's pumping out lately. And, so. and, and real quick, I'll blitz through these because I know Brian's got to be somewhere. Uh, still, the Michael J. Fox movie. It's fucking fantastic. It's an amazing documentary. If you are a fan of Michael J. Fox or have ever been a fan of Michael J. Fox, go out of your way to watch that. It is funny. It's sad, but it's incredibly inspirational. Check that out. And shockingly even to brian brian responded with wow when i told him i watched guy richie's the covenant one of the best films of the year i was completely blown away by how good that movie is jake gyllenhaal is fantastic um oh god i'm blinking on his his uh his co-lead um i don't know the guy's name it's yeah he he is is great in it as well um i was completely not prepared to like that movie i, I watched it just out of jake gyllenhaal and I love that film. Brian, you still haven't checked it out yet, right? I have not yet. You have not. Okay. But it, it is it is really, really good. It's going to be my most surprising. We are going to talk about it more in detail when we get to the end of June. We talk about our half year review. And then there was one other movie I saw. I think we both saw it. We thought it was okay. What was it? Uh, oh, yeah. The Mother. J-Lo's The Mother. It, it was no shotgun wedding. We'll say that. Yes, it's better than shotgun wedding. It's still just average. Uh, I think. Fine. I think that. I think the daughter's. It's fine for a Netflix. Movie yeah, I, I think the daughter's performance. I think it was more how she was written than more of her performance overall. Um, either way, that's what brought it. The first we were both agreed. The first half is way better than the second half. Um, but anyway, we'll be back next week with more shows, more reviews. Keep on watching. Uh, we we love all you guys for checking this stuff out. Like I said, let us know what you thought of Fast X. Until next time, we are the Movie Crusaders. I'm Sean Walsh Group. That's Brian Michaels. In case we don't see you, go watch some movies and go have some fun. You're still here. It's over. Go home.